Hey guys, it's Skipper Megan. Welcome back to our Walt Disney World trip planning series. So this week we hi Kat. <laughs> this week we are talking about what to plan before you actually go on your trip. So we've already talked about you know when you're gonna go and where you're gonna stay, how you're gonna get there, all that good stuff. So right now I'm gonna split it into two separate things because if I talked about dining and fast passes, the two major things that you need to plan before your trip. If I talked about both of them in one video, it would end up being like an hour long. So we're going to split them up. This week we're going to talk about dining, and next week we're going to talk about fast passes. So make sure you tune back in for that. Hit that little button down there, subscribe, and make sure that you're following along with us. So today we are talking about dining reservations. You're not going to need to make a dining reservation for every single place that you're going to eat if you're in the parks. Um, some places are going to be just quick service where you can just walk up to a counter and grab a snack, grab a meal. It's not going to be a big deal. You're not going to need a reservation. But if it's a table service meal, um, chances are good you're going to need a reservation for it. Just a general rule of thumb. If you're going to be sitting down and you're going to have a waiter, a reservation is always a good idea. Another general rule of thumb is if it is a character dining experience, you're going to need a reservation. Those are some of the reservations that go the quickest. And with Disney reservations, you can actually do advanced dining reservations, ADRs. You might see them uh, written out. And those are reservations. You can make your dining reservations up to 180 days in advance. I don't know what I want to eat tomorrow for dinner, but if you're going to Disney, you get to decide six months in advance what you're going to eat for dinner. Um, so that's going to be something that you need to be able to plan out. If there's a place that you definitely are going to want to eat, certain places that really go really quickly, uh, you're going to want to make those reservations as close to that 180 day mark as you possibly can. I've heard of people setting alarms on their phones, on their alarm clocks, on whatever alarm they have to make sure that they are up and ready at their computers to make those dining reservations at that 180 day mark. One of the most obvious places that a lot of people are going to want to eat, and if it's on your list of places that you want to eat, make sure that you're booking it at that 180 day mark. Uh, be Our Guest Restaurant in the Magic Kingdom. That is, of course, the restaurant themed after Beauty and the Beast. And everyone who goes to Disney World wants to eat there. You hear about a lot of people who don't realize that they need to make a reservation there, and they absolutely go berserk, and they think that their vacations are completely ruined because they're not getting to eat at this restaurant. So if that is something that is going to be uh, on your list of must-dos during your vacation, make sure that you are booking it well in advance. Another Magic Kingdom restaurant that you're going to need a dining reservation for is Cinderella's Royal Table. That, of course, is the restaurant that is in Cinderella's Castle, and the main draw of that being you're eating in Cinderella's Castle. It is a very expensive meal. It's the most expensive meal that you can get in Magic Kingdom, and it is a character dining experience, so you will get to meet the princesses and all of that. Uh, if you have a little princess who wants to do that, then that's going to be one of those things that you need to get the dining reservation well in advance. One of the uh, last restaurants that's in the Magic Kingdom that you're going to definitely need a dining reservation for is the Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace is a breakfast and lunch and dinner buffet, and that's where you get to meet all of your friends from the Hundred Acre Wood, all the Winnie the Pooh characters. So if you want to go there, especially for breakfast, you're definitely going to need a reservation because a lot of those breakfast reservations get you into the park ahead of time. You can actually be in the park before the park opens, and there's not very many people on Main Street. You don't have to fight the crowds to get to the Crystal Palace. So that's one that's very, very popular, especially early in the morning. But you're going to need reservations all day there because it's a pretty popular restaurant. Once again, it is character dining. So the Magic Kingdom restaurants are some of the main ones that people definitely have on their list of must-dos. But I'm also going to run through the restaurants in each park and some of the resorts that are also very high-ticket restaurants, things that v do book up very quickly, just so that you have those on your radar. And if those are things that you're interested in, then you can make sure that you do get a reservation for them. So for Epcot, some of the most popular restaurants there are going to be Akershus. I think I'm saying that right. It's the character dining experience in the Norway Pavilion where you get to, again, meet princesses. So if you do want to meet those princesses, that might be a better option. It is a little bit cheaper than Cinderella's Royal Table. So if the main draw for you is just eating, and, uh, eating with the princesses and not necessarily being in the castle, then that might be a good option. But again, it does need a reservation. Also in the World Showcase at Epcot, you have Le Cellier, which is not a character dining experience. It is just a, a nice steakhouse that's in the Canada Pavilion. Uh, that one does tend to go very quickly as well, so just look into that if that's something that you're interested in. As well as the Rose and Crown, which is the pub in the UK Pavilion. Um, a lot of people do enjoy that one. A lot of people go specifically at nighttime because you have a really great view of the fireworks from that particular restaurant. So if that's something that you're interested in, especially if you're wanting to go during the fireworks, make sure that you get a reservation for that one well in advance. 
One of the restaurants that is not in the World Showcase but is still in Epcot is the Garden Grill, which is another character dining experience, and that is actually in the Land Pavilion where Soren is. Um, it's a character dining with Chip and Dale and some, you know, Pluto and some of the Fab Five kind of characters, and you get to meet them. And the restaurant actually rotates. So you sit down and you have a meal on a rotating platform and the characters kind of run around and see you and I've heard that you have really, really great character experiences there. So that's another restaurant that you're going to need a reservation for in Epcot. For Animal Kingdom, there are not actually that many table service meals offered in Animal Kingdom. There's a lot of quick service, there's a lot of counter service, so lots of quick things, lots of good options for you there if you just want to grab something really quick while you're in Animal Kingdom. They do have a couple of table service, but the main one that you're going to want to get a reservation for is Tusker House. Now Tusker House is, again, a character dining experience. Once again, following with that rule of character dining, you should probably get a reservation. One of the other very popular uh, restaurants at D Animal Kingdom is Yak and Yeti. Um, Yak and Yeti is, is different because it actually has a table service option as well as a quick service option. So you can get the, the same food at the quick service that you can at the table service. It's just going to be a smaller portion and it's going to be cheaper. So you don't necessarily, if you are wanting some of that, uh, that food, which is Asian inspired cuisine, if you are interested in that, uh, you don't necessarily have to go to the table service option, so you don't need a reservation for that. You can just stop by the quick service and get it for a little bit cheaper and a lot faster without a reservation. The final park is, of course, Disney's Hollywood Studios, which right now is about half its usual size, so you don't have as many dining options as some of the other parks. But a couple of the ones that you are going to want to have dining reservations for are the Hollywood Brown Derby, which is one of the most expensive restaurants in that park. Um, it is actually modeled after the original Hollywood Brown Derby restaurant that was open in Hollywood until like the 70s or so. Um, the originator of the Cobb Salad, if you've ever had one of those, it was created at that restaurant. The one in Hollywood, not the one in Hollywood Studios. Um, so that is another good option if you're interested in that. Hollywood and Vine is another character dining experience. I have not heard the best things about the food, but the character dining experience is supposed to be very nice. So if you're wanting to experience that, go right ahead with the dining reservation. One of the most unique places on property, and specifically in Hollywood Studios, is the 50's Primetime Cafe. Now, 50's Primetime Cafe is a little bit different because it is a table service, and it's also like you're eating at someone's home table. It's set in the 50's, obviously, and people come around and they act like your, your grandma, your cousin. Um, they're going to tell you to get your elbows off the table. They're going to tell you to sit up straight, eat with your proper utensils, and you can get home-cooked food. Uh, they're going to be very interactive with you and that kind of thing. So if you are looking for a meal that is a little bit different, then that's a good option for you. If you just want to go and sit and enjoy your meal and not be harassed <laughs> while you eat, then maybe not 50's Primetime Cafe. But if you do uh, head over there, make sure that you check out the peanut butter and jelly milkshake because I've heard that that is one of the most delicious and unique uh, items on property. Moving into some of the reservations that you'll need if you go to eat at a resort restaurant. If you're not staying on property at that particular resort, you're going to need a reservation in order to park there. And that kind of applies for any of the resorts. Um, most of them do restrict their parking to guests only unless you have a reservation to eat at one of the restaurants. At Grand Floridian, the ones that you're really going to need a reservation for are Victorian Alberts, which is the most expensive meal that you can eat on property. It is a five diamond uh, restaurant. Very expensive food, very good food. You can even have the uh, chef's table option where the chef actually comes out and works with you to create your very own, do you mind, menu. And the other option that you have at Grand Floridian that's going to really require a reservation is 1900 Park Fair, which is, say it with me, a character dining experience. That is a breakfast option where you get to have breakfast with the Mad Hatter and Alice and uh, Mary Poppins, all those very polite and proper uh, characters, you're going to be having breakfast with them, and that is another one that you're going to need a reservation for. The Contemporary Resort also has a couple of restaurants that you're going to need a reservation for. The primary two being California Girl, which is on the top of the Contemporary, and you can see Magic Kingdom and all the fireworks and everything from there, so if you can get a, di a dinner reservation there, that's a really great option. And Chef Mickey's is the other. Chef Mickey's is another character dining experience where Mickey and Donald and some of the other Fab Five characters will come out dressed in their uh, chef coats and everything and they can come and talk to you while you enjoy the buffet style uh, menu there. One of the most famous uh, resort restaurants is Ohana, which is in the Polynesian Resort. Since Ohana means family, of course the food is served family style. You just sit there and 
So you just sit there and they bring around all of the food, they bring you several types of uh, entrees, different meats to choose from that are all fired right in front of you, and a couple of salads and a couple of different appetizers that you can have as much as you want for just one flat fee. Um, they'll bring, they'll just keep bringing it by. Every time they walk by, they will ask you if you need any more and you say yes or no and you know, they'll scoop some more chicken off onto your plate and you just keep eating. One of the final re restaurants that you're going to need a reservation for in a resort is the Yachtsman Steakhouse. Now this is another really great option for um, if you just want a nice meat and potatoes kind of dinner. Um, it's going to be a very good meal. I've heard multiple people tell me that that's the best steak that they have ever had. Um, not just on Disney property, but in general. They said that it was one of the best meals that they had had. So if you're looking for something that you kind of know what to expect, just your standard steak and that kind of thing, that's a good option. Just make sure that you do get a dining reservation for it because those do go quickly as well. People think about Disney Springs as just the shopping center of Disney, but they also have lots of really great dining options. A lot of them are just quick service, so you can just walk up and grab something. One of my favorites is the Earl of Sandwich, but that's, you don't need a reservation for that, so we'll talk about that a different time. But a couple that you are going to need reservations for are Art Smith's Homecoming, which has recently lost the G, so it sounds a little more down home and my kind of style. Um, that's just really great home style food, lots of fried chicken and things like that. So if that's something that you're interested in, that would be a good uh, dining reservation to make. Another good option is Paddlefish, which has recently opened. It used to be Fulton's Crab Shack, the one that was a giant uh, paddle boat. So now that has reopened. So if you are looking for some good seafood, then that would be a good option. And another good seafood option would be the Boathouse. And you may know that one from the Amphicars out front, the little cars that just drive off into the water. So if that's something that you're looking for, make sure to check those out and make a reservation. The last restaurant at Disney Springs that I would recommend getting a reservation for is STK, which is another upscale uh, steakhouse and lots of great food there. Um, a very interesting atmosphere, lots of loud music, so if you're going for a relaxing meal, that may not be the best option, but it is a very good meal, so if you are interested in having another high quality uh, steak, meat and potatoes kind of dinner, then that would be a good option for you at Disney Springs. So I think that's it as far as reservations go. Just a couple of things to remember is if you have something that you particularly want to do as far as dining options when you are going to Walt Disney World, make sure that you do reserve those as early as you can. Even if they weren't on this list, if there's something else that you're like, oh, we really want to go there and it takes reservations, go ahead and make it. These are just a couple of things that I know a lot of people have in the past enjoyed and have also had trouble getting reservations for when it gets closer to time. So if there's something that you're interested in, make sure you go ahead and reserve it so that you have that space. And also just keep in mind that if it is a character dining experience that you're looking for, that you're going to need a reservation pretty far in advance in order to secure that time spot that you're interested in. So I think that's it for this week. Make sure you come back next week. I'm talking about Fast Passes, one of the most interesting parts of a Walt Disney World vacation, and also sometimes one of the most confusing for some people. Uh, so make sure that you check back in for that. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll keep planning Disney World trips. Bye, y'all.